let's talk about um, the HPA axis. So this is another, um, again, theory and hypothesized um, theory as to the mechanisms of why exercise might have the positive uh, mental health impact and the HPA axis being a coordination of the hypothalamus, pituitary gland and adrenal gland. Can you tell us a little bit about what this theory is and what it's responsible for and um, its relation to exercise? Yeah, this uh, axis probably has, uh, of course, two waves. Uh, one I was all already referring to. Uh, you can detect with the alpha amylase. Uh, so this uh, increase uh, detectable right away. And uh, then, then you have a second wave, which is probably a little bit slower. This is um, when you are stressed. So exercise um, is not what you probably um, wrote in, in the yellow press. I don't know a good example from uh, Australia, but that um, people are saying, ah, oh, you are so stressed, do some exercise. And of course, um, an acute exercise is not something uh, else, but it is uh, an actual uh, stressor. So um, your cortisol or your adrenaline goes up, way up. And... Um, but if you do that chronically for a longer time, then your uh, HPA axis probably adapts to that and um, probably um, don't react with the same amount of um, cortisol release um, due to a, a similar uh, stressor. So um, over a longer period of time, say um, three months, with the same uh, detection, uh, with the same uh, stimulation due to acute exercise, uh, you will have uh, uh, um, lower um, cortisol response at the end of the um, the treatment. Mm. So this is the normalization of the HPA axis uh, that after being trained or trained participants who exercise regularly show a more attenuated response or HPA axis response post-exercise compared to those who don't exercise regularly. Now, that's important because of the role of HPA in uh, mental illness, for example, in depression. Can you talk to us about the level of activity that we might see in people with depression, for example, in the HPA axis and why that relates to the normalization of the HPA axis after exercise? Yeah, this is uh, also something which is um, very difficult. Um, you have seen uh, some elevation and also some attenuation, yeah, so both. So um, like always, um, I just think um, probably um, uh, from my point of view, I would say that um, um, a blunted uh, cortisol response would be something uh, which would be more logical to me. Um, but I... Um, I'm not aware of uh, any closing uh, story or any um, which um, gives it um, or which ends this discussion which is going on forever. Yeah, it seems to be that uh, there's a fair amount of correlations between a hyperactive HPA axis in people with depression, although, like you alluded to, some work has also shown a hypo-reactive HPA axis. Um, yeah, yeah. what you saw and what is uh, probably a um, good explanation for all or what you can say is uh, that uh, you have a uh, 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 lower connectivity and uh, you have at least uh, um, um, more um, shining through um, 
uh, novel system. So um, it's not you have not so many connections, and this is probably a hint for uh, the impact of cortisol, which uh, which is uh, uh, not an anabolic but a catabolic hormone. So means it uh, destroys um, uh, connections between. Um, the different nerve cells and um, um, this is a fact probably if you are uh, examining the brain of somebody who was uh, severely um, uh, depressed and you have um, if you are feeling better you have a higher amount of BDNF and other growth factors and and you have much more connections in the brain and then you are also feeling better. Yeah, so chronic, chronically high levels of cortisol or hypercortisolemia can uh, wreak havoc in the brain uh, in terms of neuronal atrophy or degradation of um, nerve cells, like you alluded to, whereas BDNF has quite the opposite effect um, and can help to lead to increased uh, volume in certain areas of the brain.